Welcome to GardenWise Adventures. My name is Malie, and today we're going to do an update video on my medlars. Now, if you have not heard of medlars before, I'll link a video up above that talks about the harvest that I did and tells you all about medlars. Now, medlars are a fruit. They're kind of a gross, ugly looking fruit, and they are more popular in England. Matter of fact, Shakespeare talked about them in his writings, and I think actually the Romans even used them. So it's an ancient fruit, and it grows really well here in Utah, but not a lot of people have heard about it, and there are very few people that I know of that have been growing it. So information on growing it in my area is non-existent. So I have been fooling around since 2008 trying to figure out how to use medlars. Now, one thing that I have read about medlars and one thing that I've been trying for the last probably six years is you're supposed to blet your medlars. Now, when you blet something, that's when you leave it in a either a cool dark area or a warm light area and let it basically go rotten. Now, these medlars, let me take you up close and show you what this looks like. I am in Utah zone seven six slash seven. We have winters of varying degrees of coldness, but this medlar was picked in December. So this is December in Utah zone seven, and I've actually been able to blet it perfectly. Let's pull it open for you and show you. Now this is what a perfectly bledded medlar looks like. It's kind of gross and rotten looking, but the smell is kind of like the smell of apple cinnamon kind of a scent. And the taste, Let's do a taste test here. Same thing, kind of an apple-y, cinnamony taste. Now I'm really excited that I was able to finally get them to blat after this many years. And let's go show you what I've learned this year and why I think it's worked. Now throughout the years, as I have been reading and researching about how to use medlars, the conventional wisdom seemed to have been not to let them go through a deep freeze. And then when you pick them, put them in a cool, dark place. Now. In Utah, that does not work very well. We have short seasons. So what I found, rather than pick them in October or November, wait until December, let them go through several hard freezes. When I say hard freezes, it got down to the low teens before I picked these, and then put them in a light, warm place. I trialed this, I had some in my garage, which is dark and cold, and then I had some in my grow room on this rack where it's light and warm. And the ones in my garage did not blet, I finally had to move them into my grow room. And within three or four days of moving into my grow room, about half of them had bledded. So now that we finally have fully bledded medlars, I'll link the recipe that I'm gonna use down below to make medlar jelly, and we're also going to make medlar cheese. Now I was able to actually get nine pounds of bledded medlars. And this is what nine pounds of gloriously bledded medlars looks like. It's kind of gross, kind of disgusting looking, but they make the most glorious, glorious jelly ever. So let's show you how we're gonna do that. Now, the first year when I made medlar jelly, the medlars were not ripe at all and they tasted horrible. It was just a terrible, horrible failure. But I tried again last year and last year, I was really afraid of the medlars tasting bad again, so I peeled each one of them. And I have to tell you, this year, I th I'm not afraid of the skins anymore causing the bad flavor because I'm pretty sure that the bad flavor was caused solely because the medlars were not ripe. So this year, I'm not going to peel them. What I'm gonna do, do this year is I'm going to quarter them. We're just gonna cut them in quarters and use them that way. And now I've I've watched a lot of videos. Some of them say just pour the water over it and use a potato masher and squish it down. Others say that if you do that, that it'll cloudy up the jelly. So I think we're just going to quarter them and not squish them at all. Although I do have to say I did squish them last year and the jelly turned out really beautifully clear. But we're gonna try quartering them and see how that works. Now let me show you what I found when quartering these medlars. And this is the pot of quartered medlars. They were in various stages of bleeding. Even if it felt soft, some of them were not fully bleeded. Now this white stuff is very astringent. It does not taste good at all. So I was able to go through and throw out the ones that were not fully bleeded. This one would have been one I would have thrown out. I would have cut out that white part right there 
And then this one, there's just a very little bit of white left over, so I figured that the bad flavor on this is not going to be enough to be to ruin the pot. So I added that one, and then this is a fully blooded Midler. Now the recipe that I'm following calls for a apple, quarter an apple, use the seeds and everything, and a half of a lemon. Now because I'm tripling this recipe, I'm just going to use these two apples. And just so you guys know, I did scrub everything. I scrubbed the medlars, scrubbed the apples, scrubbed the lemons before I started this video. But I'm going to use these two apples because they're large, and then I'm going to use one and a half lemons. So we're just going to kind of loosen up the juice a little bit in here. One, two and a half. Now I think the reason for the apples and the lemons is more to help the jelly set. It's to help release the pectin. Now I'm not very knowledgeable on a lot of canning things. I have done a lot of jellies and jams and I always use pectin. Last time I did this jelly, which was last year, the flavor was good. I actually cooked it too long. I cooked it to, I think it was a temperature of 220 degrees, but I didn't take into account that I'm 4,000 feet above sea level. So this time I looked it up and I will, I can't remember what it is right now because we're going to have to finish this tomorrow. But I think it's 212 degrees if you are 4,000 feet above sea level. Might even be 208 degrees. But anyway, so green apples and lemons actually help add extra pectin. And um, from what I've read, the lemon helps the pectin that's already in the fruits kind of release and help this and it'll help the jelly set. I'm not sure of that, but it also makes it taste good. Now we're just going to add enough water to cover the fruit. Okay. And then we're going to put it on the stove. Now we're going to bring this up to a boil. Some of the recipes say to boil it for 20 minutes, some say 45, so we'll probably boil it for somewhere around 40 minutes. I don't see how boiling it a little longer than 20 minutes is going to hurt it. So we'll just let this boil and then we'll be back. Well, I knew I should have tried this a different way. It didn't go quite as well. I guess it went like it should be expected when you're pouring a whole bunch of fruit into a bowl. So that is going to be cloudy, but it should be okay. We're going to let the rest of this strain into here. It's lifted above the pot, so it should strain just fine. And we'll let this cool off a little bit, put it in the fridge, and then we'll strain it again tomorrow. So this is supposed to strain overnight. It's about 6 or 7 p.m. and we'll see you tomorrow. So now we're on to medlar cheese. And I have to tell you, this is a little bit of a time commitment. I've been at this for about 15 minutes. This is just a small part of all the medlars we're going to do. Maybe we won't do them all. We'll just see if I can get enough where I'm happy. But this is what the inside looks like. These are the skins and the seeds. And then we'll scrape all this off so we don't get any skins and seeds in the pulp. This is the pulp that we're going to be using. So this is the pulp. And it definitely has a better consistency to it than it did last year. It's a softer, less grainy consistency, so it really helps to have the medlars properly ripened. So we'll see how much I can get and how much patience I have to continue this, and we'll be back. So sorry for any dishwasher sounds in the background. It's late at night and I'm getting the dishes done for tomorrow. But now it's time to put together our medlar cheese. So the directions say to weigh the medlars. We're just going to tear the scale here. So that's at zero now. Let's add the medlars and see how much. We have four cups, but it says to go by weight. So that is almost two pounds of paste. It looks like it says 18 on there, but that's really 115. Let's 
tear the scale again. We'll add one pound of sugar, maybe a little less than a pound. So there we have just a little less than a pound of sugar. Now this recipe does not have measurements, so we're just gonna do a splash of vanilla. dash of salt, and then we're going to zest an orange or two. We'll just see what it looks like. Now we're going to put it on low. We don't want to burn it. And we're going to stir it until the sugar melts. Now I've sprayed the molds with cooking spray and I actually got these molds last year just specifically for this purpose. I wanted to have them so that I could make medlar cheese with molds. So we'll see how it goes. We're not gonna fill them really full. There we go. Let's let them cool overnight and then we'll see what they look like in the morning. Well, it's the next day and we're back. And I actually finished the medlar cheese last night. I filmed the process because I wanted to let it sit overnight and see how it did. Now, like, as I said, I have the video linked above of how I made medlar jelly and medlar cheese last year. And it all turned out really good. It's just that the medlars were a little less ripe than they should have been, is my thoughts. And the medlar cheese was a lot drier last year, but it was also a lot coarser texture. I love the texture that it is now, but let me show you what the medlar cheese looks like. Now I did put some in the freezer last night because it was just way too wet to work with. This stayed on the counter overnight without being frozen. And actually I can pick it up a little bit today. So that, that might've been the the trick is just leaving it on the counter overnight so that the outsides could dry out a little bit. Last night, kind of like this one, if I tried to pick it up, it would just fall apart. So it didn't come out of the molds well. Maybe if I left them in the molds overnight. But anyway, the Medlar cheese is delicious. Absolutely wonderful. I love it. Think about, it's really hard to explain the flavor. It's very sweet. It has the orange, you know, the orange peel in it, so you get that Christmassy orange flavor to it. And then it has a caramely, almost like an, a really well-spiced apple butter, except for you don't have the spices in here. So I don't know how it gets that spiced taste, kind of a caramely apple butter. So it's really delicious. Last year I had so much that I froze it and I used it throughout the year. And so that's what I'm doing this year is I'll just freeze it and use it a little at a time because it is so rich. You really don't want to eat a ton of it at the same time. You can use it as a spread or just kind of as a snack on crackers, whatever you'd like to do. So the medlar cheese did turn out, even though it's ugly. This one did actually come out of the mold pretty good. The rest of them didn't. Now the juice turned out also, although we did have that little mishap in the sink because I was hurrying a little bit too much trying to get the video finished and some of the medlars actually fell into the juice. So it is a little cloudier than it was last year, but it's also thicker. So I put it in the refrigerator overnight. It finished draining last night, put it in the refrigerator overnight and it's gotten quite thick. So the recipe had stated that if you followed their recipe, you'd get about a quart of juice and I three times the recipe and I actually have exactly three quarts of juice. So we're going to continue following the recipe the way it's written. Now I'm not really a recipe follower very often. So sometimes things don't turn out, but we're going to try and follow the recipe exactly this time and see how it turns out. So for one quart of juice, you do three cups of sugar. So we're going to have three quarts of juice, nine cups of sugar. We're going to boil it until it hits 212 degrees. Now, last year when I did the jelly, you know, I've never done jelly without pectin before. So I looked up a bunch of different resources and for some reason settled on that it needed to be 250 degrees on my candy thermometer and it turned into candy, literally. I did, I was able to use it cause I would just melt the, <laughs> I had to melt it 
before I used it, but I would use it in my yogurt and it was really, really good in my yogurt. So this time I looked it up and was very careful on the resources that I used. And because I am 4,000 feet above sea level, these need to come to 212 degrees. So I don't know how accurate my candy thermometer is. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this plate in the freezer and use the freezer method to test gelling. So, you know, when it hits 200 degrees, we'll test the gelling, you know, when it, and then we'll just continue testing gelling until it does gel. So let's put the plate in the freezer and get things started. Now that's a lot of sugar. This is going to be really sweet. So I do, you know, I'm not really supposed to be eating sugar, but I do anyway, a little bit. So what I use this for, like I said, is I'll drizzle a little bit over my yogurt. A little bit goes a long ways. So I'm assuming this is going to make enough jelly that I'm just not going to make it next year. I'll just give away all my med medlars. This should be a two year supply for me. Gigi does not like me paying attention to anything else other than him. Yes, there is food. You had so many things to say. Okay, so it's at a full rolling boil and my temperature gauge says when 95. So I think with my stove and my temperature gauge, my altitude, it's going to be a little less than the 212 where it gels, but we'll use the freezer test again. Okay, it's kind of hard to see it, but I think we're getting really close. It's well, maybe not really close, but it's definitely not ready yet. Well, it's a little less runny, but it's still runny. Okay, I give up. I do not want to push it past the point where it should be. Make the same mistake I made last year and have, you know, sol solid jelly in my jars that I have to melt each time, but it's not going past the 200 mark. I cannot push it past 200 degrees. I don't know if it's my stove or if it's my candy thermometer. It's not gelling in the refrigerator or the freezer. So if we have syrup, we have syrup. We're just still learning. Well, it's been a couple of days since I finished the project and I wanted to show you what we came up with. Now, I'm very, very pleased with the flavor, but we're still on that road to success. We're still trying to work on getting a perfect jelly. <laughs> I haven't been able to accomplish that yet. Last year when I made it, it turned into kind of like a candy taffy-like texture. This year, we've got a syrup. Now, I have heard that je jellies can take up to two weeks to set, and every day this does get a little bit thicker. So maybe it will still set. We're just going to put it down in my storage area, and if it doesn't set, we're going to use it as a syrup. Now, the Medlar cheese has been in the freezer since I finished it. It's really, really a good flavor. It is a little wet still. I probably could have cooked it down a little bit longer, but let's show you close up what they all look like. 
Now I'm absolutely thrilled with the way that it looks. It's completely clear, even though it was cloudy to start with, so it turned out really clear. And it's a gorgeous, gorgeous color. Now one thing I wanted to show you that was really interesting is this was the processed semi-jelly syrup, whatever it's going to end up being. This was the leftover that I just put in the fridge and did not process it. And the color, even though it looks the same in the camera, it is just a little bit different. This is a little bit different texture. It's a little runnier and it's a little lighter. This seems to have a more syrupy texture. So the processing actually helped it a little bit. Flavor is exactly the same though, and it's a really, really good flavor. The Medlar cheese, like I said, it's a little sticky. These are frozen, but the flavor is excellent. It's got, you can, the orange flavor comes through. It's sweet. It tastes like Christmas to me. So it's just absolutely a lot of fun. Now, like I said, I cooked this down for about 15 minutes. I probably should have cooked it down a little bit longer, but it still turned out. So that is it. I figure I have probably about a two year supply of Medlars here. Next year I may try it again. Next year I may not. We may wait another year to keep trying this, but definitely one thing I want to work on is creating jelly without pectin and making sure it sets up. But if it does end up setting up in a couple of weeks, I will do an update video and let you know. So hopefully this video is helpful to you. If it has been helpful, I hope you like, subscribe, share it with your friends, and go have a wonderful garden adventure.